Erica is designing a soil vapor extraction system for the remediation of trichloroethylene at an old industrial site. She prefers experimenting in her pilot labs to better understand the contaminant before designing projects at full scale. She currently has a one liter groundwater sample from the site, which has a TCE concentration of 53.75 milligrams per liter with a Henry's law constant of 7.46 times 10 to the minus five atmospheres times liter per milligram at 20 degrees Celsius, how much TCE will be removed from the sample if her small scale soil vapor extraction unit introduces 0.95 moles of air to the sample? Is it A, 80, B, 90, C, 95, or D, 99? Pause the video and give yourself five minutes to complete the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Today we will be discussing Henry's law. Henry's law is a gas law that was formulated by the British chemist William Henry in 1803. The law states that at a constant temperature, the amount of dissolved gas in a volume of a specified liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in equilibrium with the liquid. In other words, the amount of dissolved gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure of its gas phase. The law contains a proportionality factor that is called Henry's Law Constant. Various units are used by different investigators for concentrations in the liquid and gas phases. So the units for Henry's constant will vary from problem to problem and contaminant to contaminant. Because of this, care must be taken in using this relationship, especially when obtaining constants from various sources. A few things to remember. Henry's law only works if the molecules are at equilibrium. Henry's law does not work for gases at high pressures. For example, nitrogen at high pressure becomes very soluble. Henry's law does not work if there is a chemical reaction between the solute and the solvent. A good example is hydrochloric acid. The equation describing Henry's law is the following. Where P equals the mole fraction of gas in air, H is Henry's law constant, C is the concentration of gas in water, and P sub T is the total pressure, usually in atmospheres. Some quick notes for everyone. The variable P will always be in moles of gas per mole of air, and the units for the variable C will always be dependent on the units of Henry's constant, and vice versa. If Henry's constant is dimensionless, then the units of C will be similar to the units of P, which in this problem are units of moles of gas per mole of water. Our Henry's constant is in units of atmosphere times liter per milligram, so our concentration of the TCE in the water phase will need to have similar units. Luckily it does as it has units of milligrams per liter. So let's get started. We have a sample of groundwater contaminated with TCE that we are applying 0.95 moles of air to and we want to know how much of the TCE will be in the applied air once the sample reaches equilibrium. So we are solving for the mole fraction of the volatile TCE in the air and that amount will be coming from the 53.75 milligrams per liter of TCE currently in the water phase. So when we plug in our data, we have the following. Since we are not given a pressure, we will use a standard pressure of one atmosphere. We are given the amount of air applied to the pressure, but remember that the volume of air is depending on the pressure and temperature. So remember that if you ever encounter a situation that gives you the volume of air in units, other than moles. Regarding the right side of the equation, we have Henry's law constant, and then we have the current concentration of TCE in water subtracted by the number of moles leaving the water to go to the air, then multiplied by its molecular weight of 131.4 grams per mole, then by 1000 milligrams per gram to make the terms in this portion of the equation all units of milligrams per liter. For every mole of TCE that leaves the water, which is the variable X, the same amount goes into the 0.95 moles of air. Since the sample is not yet in equilibrium, we have to subtract the amount of TCE that will go into the air applied 
to the sample. So we go ahead and solve for X and we get 3.69 times 10 to the minus four moles of TCE that will leave the water to the air once the sample is in equilibrium. We multiply this by the molecular weight for TCE and then by 1000 to convert it to milligrams and we calculate 48.49 milligrams of TCE that go into the air. In other words, if water containing 53.75 milligrams per liter of TCE were brought into equilibrium with 0.95 moles of air, the TCE concentration will reduce to 5.26 milligrams per liter. We're solving for the percentage of TCE removed from the water, so we can get the ratio of the TCE in the air and the total TCE in the initial sample, 48.49 milligrams per liter and 53.75 milligrams per liter respectfully. We take the ratio of the two and we get 90.2% as a percentage of contamination removed from the water, which is answer B. Erica is making a wise choice in using soil vapor extraction for the removal of this contaminant. TCE is highly volatile and will be readily treated with soil vapor extraction, provided that the groundwater medium is highly permeable and has a low carbon content. Large volumes can be readily treated, cleanup times are fairly short, environmental impacts are low, and costs are typically much lower with soil vapor extraction compared to other remediation technologies. Join us for episode 36 of 52 PE exam problems in 52 weeks.